For persistent data storage, we use a MongoDB Atlas cloud database, which is a NoSQL, not only SQL database. Mongoose is then used to define our user schema, which consists of name, email, password, balance, and timestamps, all of which are strings except the balance, which is a number. We also have our transaction schema that consists of the user, which references the Mongoose object ID, a value, that is a number, and timestamps, which are strings. For our data abstraction layer, we use a REST API to communicate with our MongoDB database. We then use Axios to serve the data to our React front-end components that use a Redux store for state management. Using our REST API, we can perform create, read, update, and delete operations. This applies to the user object as well as transactions. Now let's dive a little deeper into the Representational State Transfer Application Programming Interface. This table covers the Express API endpoints and data abstraction functions. Create user is a post route to API slash users. It creates a new user requiring the name, email, and password. Update password is a put route to API slash users and requires the email and password. Login user is a post route to API slash user slash login, and that uses the email and password. Delete user is a delete route to API slash user slash ID using the user ID. Update balance is a put route to API slash user slash ID using the user ID, email, and balance. Create transaction is a post route to API slash transactions using the user ID and the value. Get transactions is a get route to API slash transactions using the user ID. Delete transactions is a delete route to API slash transactions slash ID using the user ID. And here we illustrate the API documentation in graphical format broken down into the front end, middle tier, and back end. When we create a user, our HTTP server uses the create user route, followed by a create user promise, database then generates the user object. To log the user in, we follow the HTTP login route, the data abstraction layer, then finds the email and password in the database via promise. Making a deposit uses the create transaction route, followed by a create transaction promise, which results in a transaction object being created in the database. Making a deposit will use the update balance route followed by the update balance promise which writes to the user balance in the database. Making a withdrawal will also use the create transaction route as well as the update balance route followed by the corresponding promises to make changes to the database. Viewing user data uses the get transaction route followed by the get transactions promise which pulls in the transaction value based on the user object ID. Updating the password uses the update password route followed by the update password promise to write to the user password in the database. When deleting a user, we follow the HTTP delete user route followed by the delete user promise, which removes a user object and corresponding transactions from the database. And now let's review some custom database features and their design decisions. To show the full transaction history, each transaction is logged in the database as its own transaction object with timestamps. Upon rendering, each transaction is rendered as either a deposit or withdrawal based on the value. The HTTP post, get, and delete routes are shown below. From the user data page, we also have the option to delete the user. However, this is permanent. Please confirm before we use our HTTP delete user route. Are you an existing user trying to log in? Did you forget your password? No problem. Here at the Exchange, we can change your password using our HTTP update password route.
Thank you for checking out my video and visiting the MIT Exchange.